Well, I'm joined here by FIDE uh, Director General Emil Sutovsky. Emil, yesterday World Rapid and Blitz was won by a 17-year-old young talent, Abdul Satarov. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Exceptional results for Nodirbek. Not only he, he tied for first, he won in the playoff, but also the entire tournament he played such a formidable position and he showed no sign of weakness I mean he was maybe he was a bit lucky in some games but you know it's not uh, luck is not exactly a factor in chess it means that he fought well and he withstood the pressure even being on the verge of losing in a couple of games so amazing achievement and it shows that we have young players not only Firuza everyone knows already about and talking about but uh, more young players coming up and that's definitely a great sign yeah, it's uh, one of the highlights of this event. But one of the things that has been talked about a lot, and we can see it a lot on Twitter and on social media, are the tie-break rules. Uh, and people are saying that it was not fair, Magnus has not been happy about it, top players like Hikaru, Karyakin have shown support to that. What, what is your take and what is FIDE's take on that? Well, I think that uh, after the tournament, just immediately especially, Players, even the very top ones, or especially top ones, tend to be, let's say, a bit too emotional sometimes. Uh, this uh, tiebreak regulations was enforced since 2017. And actually in 2017, in Riyadh, there was a similar situation where uh, first place was shared by three players, Anand, Fidesev and Nepomnyashi. And Anand and Fidesev played the tiebreak, which we should won. And Nipomnyshi just got the bronze medal. And there was no, no fuss whatsoever. There was no complaints. There was no even opinion. Nobody has even raised an issue that it is fair or unfair. Uh, I think it's uh, largely based on perception who you want or expect to see in the final. Let's say if in the similar situation, if we wouldn't have up to the tour, but would have Carlson and Nepo in playing too, nobody would be even raising an issue again. Uh, I think we, we need to understand here the concept. The two major points why uh, the play of, of all the players like Magnus would want is not exactly let's say uh, unquestionable idea. First of all you have a long tournament uh, with a lot of trauma and tension and everything. Now when it comes to, to tying for the first place you cannot know in advance how many players would tie. Uh, how would you how would you define it? It would be five players. It would be, I suppose, at eleven players. I remember myself. I shared the European Championship 2008. I shared first to eleven. Now that was a classical event, and we had a next day playoff. Now, in an ideal world, you may have you know possibility to organize a championship with a separate day for a tiebreak. That doesn't quite work. I mean, uh, people who organize events know what the obstacles of having every extra day and so on. So theoretically, if, if staging an extra day for tie breaks, maybe it was possible. Uh, but uh, the format uh, like, like that of the five days of intense chess uh, is uh, something that was actually praised by many and, and it's, it's, it's dynamic. It doesn't uh, stumble because, okay, what do you do? You have three days and then day off, nobody's playing, they're staying here, what they do, who covers their costs. It's a, a lot of uh, things. Theoretically, once again, you, you can think about these things. But otherwise, in the present format, I think that's the most objective way. Uh, let's not forget, many people bring a comparison to Magnus stating the, it for round robin in, in, in St. Louis. But that's a totally different story, and that's the point I want to address. Would it be fair if a player who competed against all the top opposition, like Noderbeck did here, would have to play, let's say, the shared first to 11, and he would be suddenly on the same terms with a player who came absolutely from down without playing uh, most of the top players. And that, that happens, that often happens. Often 1 to 11 is, is very rare, I agree, but 1 5, 1 7, yes, and very different opposition. You could see wh whom they played. So it's not exactly fair, and it's also uh, where you are capping. We, are, we capped it on two, and once again, that, uh, that is not a decision which was born before this tournament. It was uh, actually prior to 2017, till 2016 included, there was a, simply a, a TPR which decided, basically a player with a higher opponent's rating would be a champion if, if the first place is shared. And then it was changed, modified, because uh, it, it 
really was a discussion. There was a discussion, and the opinion was yes, you want you want you wanted this final battle. Maybe it could possibly be that the players are very close, the first and two, and they have to play. Now, uh, what happened immediately next year? They had this playoff, and uh, and once again, nobody complains that Nepo, who was uh, below, didn't do it. Uh, we changed also the system of how, how you calculate these coefficients. You are not because TPR is, is a good system, but there is a flaw uh, due to the uh, lower rating of uh, younger, yeah. spe especially younger chess players in rapid. It brings to strength situation. You may play the strong, very strong player like Gukesh, who is currently like on twenty fifty. And it would ruin all your TPR. So I think that's also one thing that FIDE has to think about. Yes, we're thinking, and I will address it as well. So we took it into account. We're not like just 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 going and doing the same thing. We took it into the account, and, and we changed it. And this year it's a boogle. So it's 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 a sum of your opponent's points. So when people are coming and saying, you know, it, they simply don't read regulations. And often time I see, that, especially in social media, claiming something without reading regulations. Uh, now for addressing the, the point. That, that was a problem, and that still is a problem. But starting January 1, 2022, the K factor has been increased. So it will be K40 instead of K10, which would mean that Gukesh, let's say in one tournament, like here, is, if he's earning, I don't know, 100, 100 points, yeah. uh, he would get six, uh, 400 points if 100. So it, it, would, it would immediately close this gap for the players who are not... Uh, so was K40 heavily underrated. Is for until what rating? Uh, it was. Uh, it is limited both by age and by rating. Okay. I, I I don't want to mislead you with exact regulations, but you could could address it on the on the FIBA web, website we published these regulations. So uh, we we know about this problem. It really exists. We there is no easy way to tackle it because all these decisions are, are arbitrary. You introduce K40, and some people will say, "Why not K30?" And um, Many times you don't have a clear-cut solution. You just rely on some experience, rely on some figures, uh, and of course the calculations which, which are done, modeling, we, we, are, we are doing all the time. But talking about the playoffs, once again, uh, I, mean, I mean, there is nothing to, to do to please everyone. I mean, if you have all the players, what, you're playing, seven players should play another three hours, they played like five and a half hours of dramatic rapid and so on, and they have to play another three hours now to play. And what what kind of system would be objective one? Then they would say, okay, the system is not objective because let's say you have odd number of players, so once again, what do you do? Somebody has a buy in the last round or you have to sit out some somebody who has higher position? It's all matters, uh, once again, uh, I feel... Uh, so, so when you say that yeah. having playoffs at the end with more players, is not feasible. Do you take into account that it would be it would be tiring for the players, or it would be an organizational difficulty? No, no, no organizational difficulty at all. I mean, nobody is locking door at ten o'clock or something. No, no, I, uh, it, it's exhausting for players. Actually, uh, if you paid attention this year, we reduced the number of rounds as well. It's not happened overnight. Just we just decided, okay, let's reduce. We never do that. We actually poll players all the time about all the things, about time controls, about tie breaks, about about everything. And we're going to poll them again after this championship. And uh, last time it was clear indications that 15 rounds is 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 a bit too much. It's it's uh, five games against very strong opposition, and it's also breaks in between. It's a lot of tension. It's not like your one classical game of six hours. It's much more difficult. It's uh, it's different different games. It's all the time you have to be in focus. You cannot walk in between moves or so on. Uh, we obviously take all that in consideration. One more point, which many people they rush to immediately to criticize, but many of them, including players like like Hikaru, uh, wouldn't wouldn't know even uh, the how this Swiss system built. For, let's say, the, the appropriate number of players uh, ratio to rounds. Look what happened now. There were 13 rounds. If you would look at the pairing, imagine there is a round number 14. You would have already a problem making these this, this pairings because all the top players, or, or nearly all of them, played each other. So all of them would be downgraded. So it will be very strange situations that one guy is playing for the first place, and another is, is only having ha not even half a whole point less, and so on. So it's also it also has its merits. There is a clear, uh, let's say, of course you can always try and adjust and be here more or less um, allowing and being flexible. But uh, 13 round I think is a good system. Capping to two players, uh, 
there, there is an option, let's say, to cap to four players. It's also an option. But what happens if five, four are playing, fifth sits out? Also strange. And what happens with the three players? What do you do? Is the top one sits out? And, I mean, it's, it's tricky. We will pull players so once. Could it be like the top player sits out and then the remaining, like if it's odd number, because he has finished at the top and that is his... You know, he's got that right. That yes, yes, that, that, that's one of the options. That's one of the options. Uh, I would uh, say that uh, as it is now, it looks to me the most reasonable because if you played really, you know, exceptional tournament in a tie for a top place, you you are likely not not necessarily have to, but likely to be in one of the two. It can happen, like like here, that that Magnus who did play almost everyone and but trailed by a couple of points, it didn't make it. But once again, we should not uh, uh, treat the rules and change the rules just due to the fact that the great, really the great champion remained out. Once again, it wasn't passed, and I strongly believe that for the public opinion specifically, if it wasn't uh, for up to the tour of playing Nipomnischi, uh, the situation would, would be seen differently. Uh, Magnus, of course, has... Uh, his opinion and it should be listened to. And uh, actually for all these years as a member in the, in the FIDE Council, he, he had all these rights to, 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 to share it. It was never aired. And the, the tournament, once again, it, it transfers in this current format uh, from 2017. Anyways, uh, what we are proud about is that we are always listening to players. We are not, it's not like, we are not listening quite quite as much to, to the, you know, some, some, some sporadic tweet. We will send just a poll and we will see out of the top players who, who, who really believes that it should be, should be a playoff and maybe we will suggest the, the, the different possibilities for the playoff, let's say only capping two players, capping four players and so on. So when you say that uh, you take poll of players, is the top 100 players, uh, how is this poll done? Uh, that's a good question. We do it every time differently because uh, it depends on the format of the event we're asking about. Let's say we, uh, uh, I can share with you some news about the candidates tournament. Uh, now the candidates 2022, which, which will take in Madrid as we announced, yes. uh, it will have a playoff. It's a change from the previous one when it was only, only on, a, on a tie break. Uh, so it will have a, a, a playoff. And we addressed uh, all the players who already qualified to the candidates and the highest rated players remained, I think, six or seven highest rated, rated players who haven't yet qualified but, but may qualify. Uh, for, for World Rapid, we will ask the largest group of players because, as you see here, yeah, up to the Tour of Wins, and you wouldn't otherwise include him in a poll. So we would, we would ask the, the larger poll of players. I can't name you a number now, but uh, definitely a few dozens of players w w would be asked to share their opinion. Uh, it is just, um, you know, I was, maybe, maybe I can call I am a player, but I was a player. I was a professional player in the past. Uh, and I know that uh, no tiebreak system is yes. perfect. You can have a lot of uh, disagreements about the concept of playoff per se, because they are playing rapid chess and suddenly they have to decide it in three plus two. Why exactly is it the, the part of the same? You can also. This argue. is also the problem in world championship e classical, yes. Exactly. So, so there, there are some people and quite many people who believe that classical chess cannot be decided by rapid tie breaks. And uh, it's not like I second this opinion, but I fully understand it. And, and there is a very, very serious logic behind it. And also here, I mean, if you get down to, to a tie break with more players, so you will end up with speeding it up completely. So it's, it's not easy. Even, even here, we remove the Armageddon because Armageddon is also not, not something that is, um, you know, it sometimes violates everything. <laughs> and uh, we, we had this uh, rule here that there were two games, three plus three, yes. and then till the first you, one. Some of us were worried that the match might go on for like many uh, hours. Yeah, uh, because exactly. Now imagine, now imagine there are not two players, not one single match, but, but, but five players. It's, 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 once again, there is no easy solution. And uh, once again, we should not be dependent on the situation solely because it was a, well, a world champion who, who, who suffered from, from, from this. It's not injustice because everybody knew. It's, it's just a sort of thing which doesn't have a clear-cut solution which would be, let's say, the best one. It's, it's something that should be discussed. Do you feel that there could be a better solution that could come be 
made by you know talking to the players and eventually coming up maybe like all the players included and then top player if it's odd number sitting out that could be a, an option uh, we will uh, we will certainly ask players not only to to indicate the preferences that we will suggest them but also to, to offer the ideas and, and and to see how it works uh, look i mean for fitness there is no interest to stick to some system which is unpopular our entire idea is to make it both uh, acceptable for players and engaging for spectators. I mean, what other ideas we may have? We we are actually all the time looking for for to improve and to deliver. Uh, sometimes some players may be unhappy. It's 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 normal. But once again, 2017. Where where all these people were? Uh, no, no, nobody. Uh, I I I went back and scrolled back. To, to read the reports, let's say, on Chess, Chess 24, huge report, a lot of comments, no single comment saying, wow, it's unfair, Nipomnichi is sitting out. Where, where are you were, guys? I mean, uh, what changes? The change is only the fact that you have young lad, and it's great that you have a young lad who surprisingly took over and, and, and uh, actually world champion who is really huge player and, and very competitive, uh, shares his uh, disagreement with that. I fully, fully believe that it's, it, uh, it is not like uh, he only thought about it just because he is now out of it. No, he, might, he probably believes in the system uh, per se. It is just he had no reason to explain it before because he was not harmed. But then again, if you know regulations in advance, you, you, you know how it works. You have all the cards to come on stage and to express your opinion, at least to initiate the public discussion. Uh, Initiating is now fine. Calling it uh, absolutely idiotic um, is not something to be praised. I would say. Well, Emil, uh, thank you for your thoughts, and uh, hopefully, uh, the players will be spoken to. And FIDE, as always, includes players, and we will come to some or the other conclusion. But thank you so much for for speaking out right now. Thank you. I look forward to have feedback from players, and let's see what happens in Blitz because we may have another discussion. For <laughs> Yeah.